Hello, everybody. I'm Victoria Reynoldson, communication and culture coach. And welcome to Wednesday Words with me. And um, you may be watching this as a video. Um, you might be listening to the audio, which I've created, or perhaps you like to read. So I've also created a blog for you. So please feel free to uh, engage my, with my Wednesday Words in the way that suits you. So welcome to today's topic, and I'm going to be sharing um, a bit of an insight uh, from a talk I actually did recently to a French group. Uh, they were mostly job searchers, and we were particularly talking about um, job searching in the UK and thinking about communication uh, within that interview process. And I particularly brought this up because I know from my clients that when they're job searching, sometimes it can be quite difficult to interpret what's really going on within the interview process, because actually the British cultural style is to be more indirect style of communication. And that can be uh, difficult to decode and understand what's really going on. So I thought that was a sort of section I know in the talk that um, there were lots of questions and I think people found that quite useful and I know my clients find that particularly useful. So I thought I would share it here today as well. And um, I will talk a bit about how you can decode what's going on in the interview. So some things that you might hear and helping you to sort of understand, are they more sort of neutral or potentially even negative messages? Or perhaps there are some positive messages in there that give you some strong indication that you're doing well, that you'll make it through to the next round or even to interview offer. And then I'm going to talk a bit about clarifying, because in this type of situation, when you're experiencing indirect communication, it's really important to get clarity. Of course, you want to know where you stand. And you may, there are some techniques which I'll share with you about how to do this in an appropriate way, because of course you don't want to come across as too pushy, too demanding. Um, so you wanna keep that relationship, but you still want to maybe just probe a little bit and find out what might be going on um, so that you can kind of manage your expectations. Okay, so let's dive into the topic of interpreting the interview. So, yeah, this is a tricky one, right? You know, some um, interviewers are very, very closed. It's really hard to read what's going on, particularly if you're doing this like this online. And, you know, you don't have the full view of the, the body language necessarily. Um, but there might be some specific things that you hear, which I wanted to share with you uh, today. So first of all, um, they might sort of talk um, in this sort of way. They might say things like the successful candidate would be expected to work on these projects. Now compare that to if they say, uh, when you start, you will be working on these types of projects. Hopefully you can see the difference in communication approach. In the first one, it's very impersonal. They're talking about the successful candidate and they use the conditional would. So that suggests that perhaps they are not, um, either that's a neutral or perhaps an, even a negative message. But in the second statement, you can see that they're even imagining you starting in the role, working on the projects. And that's a really strong positive message, a buying message that suggests that you're going to be successful to the next round um, and perhaps even beyond. And um, also, if you sort of ask about, you know, maybe next steps, if they said something like, well, we're interviewing lots of candidates at the moment, uh, we'll get back to you soon. These are quite neutral messages, even potentially negative messages. Um, but if they're very specific, if they say things like, at the next stage, you will be meeting, um, or at the next stage, you'll be expected to prepare a case study, for example, then that is fantastic because again, they're being specific about you, what they expect you to do, it sounds very definite. So those can be taken as positive communication signals. And then finally, you know, in terms of, um, you know, just again, culturally to help you understand the British interview market, um, 
if at the end of the interview, you find that the interviewer is asking you about uh, your salary expectations or your notice period, um, or even that the conversation turns more casual and relaxed and you feel like you're almost chatting, these are all really, really positive signals because usually, um, particularly the salary and, and notice period um, conversation happens right at the end of the interview process just before they're about to make an offer. Um, so that's worth knowing for the British uh, market, uh, employment market, and gives you a good sense that your application could be successful. So I hope that's helpful in terms of interpreting. Let me turn my attention now to clarifying. So let's imagine you've been hearing many more of the neutral messages and you're just not really sure where you stand. They're keeping, uh, as we say, their cards close to their chest and they're not really indicating um, whether they're interested in you as a, as a candidate or not. What can you do? I think a really good technique is to clarify. I think there's nothing wrong in these kinds of situations to be really kind of asking questions, but we need to do this in the right way so that we come across as interested in the role and we want to be engaging with them, but clearly we don't want to sound too demanding, too pushy. So here are some suggested questions that you can ask. So for example, I might ask something like, um, you know, could I check um, who will I be meeting at the next stage? Or um, could you please confirm when do you think you can come back to me? Um, or even more specifically, could you come back? Will you be coming back to me uh, next week? So, you know, don't be afraid to use phrases like, are you saying, can I confirm? Could I just check? Um, uh, what else? Do you, do you think you can uh, reply to me by this point? So these types of phrases are really useful and actually not just for the interview process. I think clarifying is incredibly important technique, communication technique to use in many situations, for example, in meetings, because even, um, you know, even if the communication uh, you know, appears to be happening. Sometimes people are deliberately not being clear and they're being vague because either there's a, a difficult situation or a challenging issue. Um, so just bear that technique in mind. It can be really, really helpful. So there we go. So that's a bit of an overview of interpreting the interview um, process and what might be said and interpreting the communication and how to clarify. I really do hope um, that's been useful for you. And of course, if you have any specific questions, please do come back to me, drop me a note. There's lots of links and ways to contact me. I'm always really happy to chat and, and answer if you've got a specific question. And of course, if you are preparing for the British job market, whether you're relocating or as part of an international team, then please get in touch. Um, I often help my, my clients with that process of getting ready for the British interview style and also the step before in terms of preparing a British style CV. So please get in touch with me. Also make sure that you subscribe so you receive these regularly. And uh, thank you so much for joining me today for the Wednesday Words. I'm Victoria Reynoldson, communication and culture coach.